So it didn't take Donald Trump 24 hours after one of the largest news organizations in this country was targeted with a pipe bomb to attack the media. Donald Trump now playing the blame game, targeting the press for generating, quote, a very big part of the anger we see today in our society. This is the president's response to a potential serial mail bomber who may now be responsible for sending 10 suspicious packages to prominent Democrats and critics of the president. Those targets now include both Vice President Joe Biden. Two devices addressed to him were intercepted in Delaware this morning and actor Robert De Niro, a frequent critic of the president. As we sit here, there's still no suspect and no motive, but investigators might have a lead. Two senior law enforcement officials tell NBC News they're looking into whether some of the packages were mailed from Florida. Here was Donald Trump less than 12 hours after CNN's New York headquarters were evacuated. As part of a larger national effort to bridge our divides and bring people together, the media also has a responsibility to set a civil tone and to stop the endless hostility and constant negative and oftentimes false attacks and stories. Have to do it. And by the way, do you see how nice I'm behaving today? This is like, have you ever seen this? We're all behaving very well. And hopefully we can keep it that way, right? We're going to keep it that way. I'm trying to say that very nicely. I'm trying to. See, normally I'd scream, they want a socialist takeover. Now I say, once a socialist takeover. I I'm trying to be nice. Irony is dead when the American president has to pat himself on the back for behaving. The Washington Post responded to Trump's effort to shift blame from his own vitriolic language to the media that covers him. Quote, Trump again shirks responsibility for his own inflammatory contributions to the political discourse and instead assigned blame to others. The president, who's made a sport out of mocking his political rivals with nicknames like Crooked Hillary, also exhorted others in the political arena to stop treating their opponents as as morally defective. Here's Donald Trump just this month, just this month, on his political enemies, all of them targeted with bombs this week. Crooked Hillary is a great unifier. Maxine Waters, good old Maxine, low IQ individual. Low IQ. You ever see when the fake news interviews them and then they try and cut it, but they never. They'll go to a person holding a sign who gets paid by Soros or somebody, right? That's what happens. By the way, by the way. Don't worry, I don't like him either, okay? We call him 1% Biden. Until Obama took him off the trash heap, he couldn't do anything. Now he's talking about Ron. Tough guy. Morally defective. I'll say. Here to discuss today's development, some of our favorite reporters and friends. Former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance from the Washington Post. Power Up anchor Jackie Alemany. She also covered Trump's campaign. At the table, Nick Confessori, political reporter for The New York Times. And Rick Stengel, former Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy. Steve Schmidt joins us as well. Steve, let me start with you. What's happening in America right now? A historic event. We haven't seen anything like it since the night Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. This was a mass assassination attempt, including two former presidents, a former vice president of the United States, a former attorney general of the United States, a former chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee. Um, the person who is responsible for sending bombs to all of those people is the person who mailed the bombs. Donald Trump did not mail the bombs, but he created the atmosphere where a sick person would look at those individuals and see an enemy. Trump makes no pretense about being the commander in chief of all of the country, being president of all of the people, including the people that voted against him. He is, in effect, a tribal chieftain who has declared war on half of the country. When he incites by attacking and stigmatizing vulnerable minority populations, alleging conspiracy, calling his opponents enemies of the people, calling journalists en enemies of the people. What is it that we do to enemies? How do we deal with an enemy when we invoke martial analogies? Well, we kill enemies. And someone out there took him both literally and seriously. 
when you look at a Trump rally, the venom spewed at the journalists, the level of menace, the edge of violence, his celebrating body <clears throat> slams by a congressman who physically assaulted a reporter, his celebrating supporters who punch opponents in the face. Every day, Donald Trump does everything he can for his own selfish political purposes to inflame and incite. And we sit around now and we wonder, is there any causation? Of course there is. Is there anything that he has done that would create an atmosphere that would instigate or trigger a sick person? Of course there is. And so this idea that Donald Trump is held harmless and not responsible is absurd. He has degraded the civility. He has exacerbated the divisions more quickly, more profoundly than any leader of this country in American history. And now we stand at the edge of a, uh, we stand on a ragged edge, looking into an abyss. This is partisan violence. This is sectarian violence. This is one of the two political tribes targeted by a sick person, but a sick person perhaps instigated um, by a rhetoric that Trump revels in all day, every day. Steve, let me read you something that the, the New York Times' Charles Blow writes about uh uh, on these lines. Um, he writes, rhetoric, mobs, and terror. Trump said to these people that their enemies were his enemies, everyone they saw as a threat to their cultural heritage, societal dominance, and personal privilege. Muslims, Mexicans, immigrants, liberals in general. He would attack on their behalf. Ever the projectionist, Trump repeatedly encouraged violence at his campaign rallies and has recently taken to casting Democrats as a mob. In fact, his supporters are the mob. Steve? He's 100 percent correct. Let's look at the caravan such that it is. Now, whether you think that consideration should be given to allow some of them into the country as refugees or whether you believe that none of them should be allowed into the country, the truth of the matter is this is not a panzer division advancing on the southern border that's a national security threat to the United States of America. But Donald Trump has instigated hatred, stoked it by saying that they are. And so if you're an unbalanced person out there, what is it that you hear? You hear that all of these people are enemies. They're enemies of Trump. They're enemies of the state. They're enemies of the people. And what they're doing is allowing the country to be invaded by a dangerous horde coming from the South, made up of brown people. And so the consequences of all of this after two years should not be a surprise to anybody. If you incite and then you incite again, if you revel in menace, if you stigmatize and declare your opponents as enemies from the highest office in the land, the reality is this. When the president of the United States, people listen. When the president of the United States speaks, people listen. And someone out there took him literally and took him seriously, maybe. And the result is that we also, that we almost saw a couple of presidents, a vice president assassinated. Imagine if the security screenings did not work. And yesterday was a day of bloodshed as opposed to a day where these terror attacks and assassinations failed. This would have been amongst the most significant days in the history of the United States. And but for proper security screenings and the competence of law enforcement, there was no disaster. But that doesn't mean there won't be next time. And the person who is most singularly responsible for edging this country into a cold civil war is Donald J. Trump. And it's a shameful legacy that he will carry with him because of that for the rest of his days. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.